Hello, everybody. So welcome. I'm going to start slowly since there are still a few people um, joining via Zoom. Um, but welcome, welcome. How many people? I would have, of course, loved to see a couple faces if you're comfortable turning on videos, um, just so that I know who I'm talking to and can read the room a little bit. Um, how many people are in Ithaca right now? A few of us, none of us? Well, just to forewarn, if you're in Ithaca, you will know that we got a foot of snow last night. <clears throat> and I live out in the country and actually need to get my driveway plowed to be able to leave my house. Well, it gets even more interesting because the snow plow has yet to come. And so I am trapped in my house with dogs. Uh, my husband's traveling. And so if you hear delirious barking at any moment, um, and if I need to put you all on pause, don't be alarmed. It is simply that the snowplow has finally arrived. So it's crazy. The snow is like over my boots. I can't even walk. So ah, you are lucky you are not here if you are not with us in Ithaca. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started and tell you guys about the Cornell Pre-Law Summer Program in Paris. Um, um, I'm going to circle back to address each of the things on this particular slide, but um, I'm super excited about this program. It's actually a very new program. Um, we just started it a couple of years ago, and it's particularly exciting us to, to us because it's really the first of its kind. Um, so what we're doing with the pre-law program is we like to think of as really a pioneering approach to legal education. Um, it's the first such program that's organized around um, something of a full immersion experience where you're getting um, exposure to real law school classes, but at the same time, meeting in a small group section where you're kind of dissecting and analyzing and making sense out of what that experience is like. So again, I'm going to unpack all of this. Um, but the other thing that's exciting about it is, of course, that it takes place in Paris. I will tell you about why Paris is so great momentarily. Um, but the way we conceive of it is, is as a study abroad summer program. So you has, it has all the perks of a normal study abroad program, but with serious intellectual component that involves this law school aspect of it. Um, and again, I'll circle back to all of that. What I wanna do in Paris, I'll, I'll wait, something of a teaser, but I will wait to talk about Paris until the end so that we don't lose focus. Um, so this is my agenda today, the different things I'm going to talk about, um, what the program's like, who I am, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end of the program. Um, but one of the things that's unique about it is there are really five different components. You'll be taking real law school classes. There will also be um, small group sessions that have to do with everything from how to succeed in law school, plus how to master and really excel at the law school admissions process. And then of course, fun times in Paris, um, lots of different tours, outings, that kind of thing. Um, um, and the way we've conceived of it is that there are really two core components and a lot of the value of the program involves the synergies between those two halves of the program, um, so to speak. Um, um, you're, in a way, this program piggybacks on a longstanding Cornell Law School program. Cornell Law School has long had a summer program in Paris that attracts um, real law school students from around the world. Um, so half of your time will be spent in classes, again, that are actual law school classes, with um, law school level students. Um, that's less scary than it sounds because the US is sort of unique in that you go to college and then law school for three years after college. Most of the rest of the world, places like England, college is what you, or sorry, law is what you major in in college as an undergrad. So most of these international students will be people your own age, but mixed in again will be more advanced students who are actually in law school at the time. Um, so again, half of the program it will involve actual substantive law school classes. 
at the end, you'll even take real law school exams. Um, um, I'll talk about why this is such a great thing in a second. Um, and then the other half, which I'll talk about after that, um, um, are what we refer to as these small group seminars with a bunch of other pre-law students like you. And I'll talk again about what we, what we do in those in a moment. Um, so two substantive classes, um, what will they be on? Because we're located in Paris, this is a global law program. Um, um, our rationale for doing that are, is twofold. On the one hand, when you get to law school your first year, you'll have your standard 1L classes, torts, contracts. I actually teach 1L contracts every fall, con law, crim law, civil procedure. You can get there when you get there. Um, what we've decided to do is instead to develop the program around various international issues. And the other aspect of that is that you'll be located in the middle of Europe. And so much of what you'll be learning about in these substantive law classes are issues tied to international law and governance. So in a human rights class, um, a unit on immigration in Europe. Um, you'll be touring various French legal institutions. And so we'll be reading and studying actual cases by those courts. Some of the units will involve debates about the European Union and the future of the EU as a political experiment. So you'll be studying material of urgent relevance to legal and political life in France while you're there. Um, so the topics that you'll be taking in the courses are again, designed to intersect with some of the cultural things you'll be experiencing while you're in France. Um, um, and as I was saying, these are in the morning, you'll have one class, the afternoon, another substantive legal class. These will culminate with actually taking exams. Um, the idea being that that will allow you to leave the summer saying, hey, I've actually taken two real law school exams and did really well. Um, the second half, in a way, um, is the nuts and bolts of the program. In many ways, the value of it, as I was saying, extends from the synergies between these two halves of it. Um, what will we be doing in the small group seminars? Why do we have them? Um, you guys have probably heard all sorts of stories about what the first year of law school is like, right? What's it supposed to be like? Anyone want to weigh in? Most people experience it as super stressful and pretty hard. Um, why can it be notoriously difficult? Again, you guys have probably even seen movies about 1L. There are television shows about the first year of law school. Um, the reason it can be daunting to a lot of people is because there can be something of a sink or swim element to it. Um, I often describe 1L as like being in a second year language class without having taken the first year and just kind of having to dive in and figure out everything. Um, and you get there, nobody tells you how to brief a case. Nobody tells you what notes you should be taking. Nobody tells you how to study for an exam. Nobody tells you right, how to handle cold call, this experience of the Socratic method. Um, most of what we're gonna be doing um, in this pre-law seminar is figuring out how to master all of those key components of the law school experience and basically how to succeed in law school. So it's something of a crash course in how to be successful when you arrive to law school. Um, so we'll do everything like have a session on how to outline, what is the case method? Um, we'll talk about how to stay healthy in law school even. Um, and so what will happen is that you'll be taking these real, real law school classes and every other afternoon meet after the fact in a small group that basically debriefs about what just happened that morning. We will basically sit down and be like, so what should we have put down in our notes? Um, what was the professor after this morning? Um, so sort of unpacking and demystifying all of these otherwise very mysterious aspects of 
what law school is like. Um, um, so that will be a big component of what happens. Again, it's kind of like a full immersion experience where you're analyzing that experience in real time at the same time as it's going on. Um, um, you guys have probably all heard the notion that success in law school is less about knowledge of any particular subject area than simply learning how to think like a lawyer. Um, you know, you can learn all about contracts you want before you get there, but what really leads to success is learning how to solve problems in a particular way. So in a way, what the program is designed to do is to train you how to think like a lawyer before you show up at law school. Um, as I was saying, um, every fall I teach 70 students at Cornell Law School in a big contracts law class. Um, and so when we were putting this program together, one of the big things I tried to do was simply to make sure that I would give the participants the skill sets that I kind of wish they had when they got to my contracts classes, or for that matter, that I wish I had before I showed up at law school back in the day. Um, so we're really trying to give you a leg up, right? To reduce the learning curve that otherwise comes with showing up in law school. Um, the other cool component and kind of added perk of this um, will be a special session with the Cornell Law School admissions office. So the Dean of Admissions is gonna meet with us via Zoom. It used to be, Zoom used to be all cool back in the day when we did this five years ago, but imagine that. Um, so there will also be time that we devote this summer to actually figuring out what you need to do in order to get into a top law school. Also can be kind of mysterious. Um, so we'll talk about how much do the LSATs really matter? What should you do to prepare for the LSATs? Um, we'll have kind of an inside scoop on what Cornell Law School's admissions office is even looking for. When they sit down to read your file, what are they paying attention to? So we're also gonna be devoting this time, time this summer to unpacking all of these mysteries tied to law school admissions. Um, um, so um, again, really um, taking apart that process that can feel super daunting and for good reason to a lot of us. Um, I have a drink of water for a second. My dog's doing pretty well. I'm impressed. We'll have to like give him a round of applause if he makes it to the end. So who should apply? Again, we've really tried to conceive of this program as geared toward a pretty diverse audience. Um, one, if you're eager to go to law school, but anxious about the admissions process and how you will fare. The program is designed to give you a leg up there. Um, one of the ways it will give you a leg up is that it's a competitive and selective program. And so being able to say that you were accepted into it, I think will be something of a boon um, um, on your CV, your resume, right? And your admissions file. Um, so it's a great way to build your CV and if you're not a Cornell, law, a Cornell student right now, you'll obviously leave the summer with a Cornell transcript and a grade. Um, so you'll be able to say, hey, I've taken real Cornell law school classes. Here's my Cornell grade. Um, so again, a way that you can really fill out your own profile as an applicant to law school, if that's one of the things you're looking to achieve. Um, another big category of people if you want to get to law school and perform to the best of your ability. Again, law school is super competitive. It's a lot less competitive than it used to be back in my day. But you guys probably also know the grades are curved. That means for every A a professor gives, they have to give a C plus or a B minus. Um, so as I was saying, one of our real goals is to hone and perfect your own study and exam taking skills. For instance, before the exams, we'll sit down with a professor and talk about how they construct their exam. What are they looking for? What kind of skills are they setting out to assess? Um, so anyone who's planning to go to law school and wants to make sure they get there um, with sprinting rather than just walking, 
to, to really make sure you're prepared for that when you show up. Um, I think this is also a great program for people who are on the fence about law school. I'm sure you guys are also aware that law school is not cheap. <laughs> Lots of people take out big student loans. Um, if you're on the fence, you want to get a taste for what law school is going to be like, but you're not 100% sure, this is a great way to get that taste of a real law school experience without the full three-year investment. Um, so a great thing for people who are, again, really trying to figure out what they want to do with their career. Are you going to like law? Are you going to like legal study? Great way to figure out quickly. Um, and I would add a fourth category of people. Um, if you know you want um, to go to law school and you can't wait to start, um, if you're dying to get there, if you're interested in the subject matter, if you want to learn about European law, um, excellent way to do so, um, as well as to get to know lots of other people from around the country and world for that matter, who are also interested in legal study. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in college, I had one friend who was thinking about going to law school, but that was it. So I felt kind of lonely in my career ambitions and would have loved a wider cohort of people when I was a junior and senior in college who I could trade notes with as we were both taking the LSAT. Um, so a fantastic way to develop a community of like-minded people from around the world who share your own career ambitions. Um, and just, to, you guys should absolutely put questions in the chat, um, but I'm gonna maybe circle back and answer them at the end if that sounds okay. Um, so we will get there momentarily. Um, so what, what's it gonna be like? Um, again, it's a three week program. How's the program structured? Um, you'll show up. There are a couple days of orientation lectures where everybody, including the law students, um, go to these big lectures about international law. Um, we'll also have a few orientation sessions in the small group section that you're assigned to in that first week. Um, um, there'll be a few tours of outings, um, different French legal institutions. So you'll be, again, having these behind the scene tours of some of the foundations of French legal culture. Um, and then we dive into courses. The courses basically last about two weeks. And then there are a couple days at the end where you take an exam um, and then, or rather two exams, one for each class. Um, how do the exams work and your grade work if you're worried about what's my transcript gonna look like? What we do is we um, average the grades between the, the small group and then the two exams into kind of one combined grade. You can of course know how you did on the two different exams if you wanna find out, um, how did I do on the human rights class exam? You can gain that information. Why might you want to? Well, you also might wanna ask one of these professors for a recommendation letter at the end of the summer. Another great way to enhance your kind of law school application profile um, um, by way of this experience. Um, and then as I was saying throughout, there will be various events in Paris, um, tours of the Seine, things like that. Um, as you can tell, what's your average day gonna be like? Sorry, next thing on my um, agenda. Um, as you guys can tell, this is a pretty intensive program. Um, my sense is that mom and dad are gonna think that's an awesome thing. <laughs> so if you're interested in selling this to mom and dad, you can just be like, look what my days are gonna be like. All I'm gonna be doing is studying. No, I'm kidding. Um, the way we've envisioned it is all of the usual excitement and fun and play of a study abroad program with this really serious component. It's both serious academically and serious in terms of your long-term career goals. So um, this is meant to be a real investment for you guys on so many different levels, both investment in enhancing your application profile, um, success in law school, and study skills overall. So um, a mix of intensive days where you have one class in the morning, then lunchtime, then another class, 
And then um, every two days or so, there'll be this debriefing small group section where everybody says, what just happened? What should we be learning? Um, and then evenings, various outings in Paris, some plan through the program, some um, fun on your own. So why Paris? I mean, selfishly, oh, sorry, these are simply some of the program events that we'll be doing. Um, um, again, exploring some of the legal and political institutions of French life, um, inside tours. Um, why Paris? Um, Paris personally is my favorite city in the world. And it's a particularly fantastic place to be in the summer. Um, this is the Pantheon at the Sorbonne where um, about half of our classes will be located. Um, here's simply a fun picture of, whoops, why did we go too far? I thought there was a fun picture. Sorry, I messed up my slide order. Um, um, I was just editing them this morning. So um, here's a photo from a few years ago when we were there, there was a, a day of record-breaking heat. Um, so we commemorated that with a class photo, um, simply French cafe life. Um, why is Paris such an amazing place to be in the summer? As you'll see simply from this image, a um, um, famous cafe that um, Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre used to write at and meet at. Um, French social life is organized around um, cafe culture and eating and dining on terrasse on the sidewalk. And um, I think it's one of the best places in the world to be a student or an academic because of how this cafe system works, where you literally rent a table by buying a $2 coffee. Um, so where will you be studying? Somewhere just like that. Um, France, France is also incredibly outdoors, um, all kinds of social activities to look forward to over the course of the summer. So it's an incredibly lively place. Um, this is simply a photo of me with the other director of the Paris program, Professor Mitchell Asser. Um, he directs the, um, the law school half of the program. Um, it's especially cool that our events take place at the um, Sorbonne, which is one of the oldest institutions of higher education in the world. It's kind of a legendary space. And I can't tell you how magical it is to be in class in a lecture room there. Um, don't worry, it's air conditioned. Um, the energy and excitement that stems from being in such a location is really um, irreplaceable. The other thing that's amazing about um, Paris is how condensed and contained it really is as a city. This is a kind of a blurry image, so I'll go on to another one. But you can see right where the Pantheon is, number five. Um, it's all of about a 15 minute walk to Notre Dame and about a 25 minute walk to somewhere like the Louvre or the Musée d'Orsay. So Paris is an incredibly easy city to navigate um, if you're on foot. The subway system is actually awesome. Like every time I go to New York City, you just kind of have to roll your eyes because their subway system is so inferior to that of Paris. Um, so it's again, for me, one of the real joys of the program is just how amazing it is to be learning about law this way in Paris. Um, and again, the kind of interconnections between, um, um, between those, those, um, those two dimensions. Um, you guys are probably also thinking, um, there's a pandemic going on. Um, Paris is also incredibly easy from that standpoint. I was actually there in, uh, where'd that photo go? I had a silly photo of me jogging in Paris in December. Maybe I had the wisdom to take that down. Anyway, I was actually there in um, <laughs> um, December for a couple of weeks. It was actually super easy to get in and out. You simply upload your vaccine card to your you know, United Airlines or whatever app and breeze through immigration. Nobody has to see it either coming home or leaving. So very, you know, getting in and out was very easy. And um, if people are worried about safety, being in France is also safer, or at least to me felt a little bit safer being than being in the States because they have something known as the pass sanitaire, where you, once you get there, you take your passport and your, your vaccine card, 
and it takes about 10 minutes and $20 at a pharmacy and they issue a pass sanitaire, which you just carry around on your phone. And every time you go to a restaurant or a museum, they just scan it quick a minute. Um, so, you know, who knows what things will be like in July, um, things change it by the hour, but um, in terms of safety issues, Paris and France are incredibly easy um, um, places to navigate and to be on all sorts of different levels. They also, everybody there speaks English. So if your French is non-existent or mediocre, um, don't think twice. If anything, the challenge is trying to get somebody to speak to you in French when you buy a croissant. So um, um, just, I know those are always questions that come up. Um, so I wanna just tell you briefly about me and why this is a program that I direct and then sum up a few things and take time for questions. I'm seeing already a few in the chat. Um, me, I went to law school fresh out of undergrad. I went to a small liberal arts college in Michigan for, for undergrad where I was an, a philosophy and English double major. Um, and when I showed up at the University of Chicago, um, right after graduating, I didn't know what hit me. I'd never been in a class that big. Um, it was absolutely a little daunting. And um, yeah, all I can say is I wish I had a program like this before I showed up. Um, after law school, I practiced in Chicago and New York at a big Wall Street firm, one of the biggest firms in the country actually doing mostly banking and structured finance law. So transactional work, corporate transactional work. Um, um, I did that for a couple of years and then I decided I wanted to be a professor. So I went back to get my PhD in English literature. And um, today, now I'm unusual in that I have a joint appointment. I'm based half in the law school and half in the um, English department, College of Arts and Sciences. And on the one hand, every fall I teach one of these big doctrinal 1L classes that meets four days a week. Um, and then some of my other teaching is either a mix of law students or undergrads. I'm actually teaching a freshman writing seminar this semester. Um, so most of my teaching and advising is geared to think about the transition to law school. Um, I do a lot of work pre-law advising and spend lots of time thinking about how do you make the transition from being say a history major or an English major to a really successful law student because those are very different styles of thought. Um, so that transition is exactly what we'll be working on this summer. Um, but that's why here I think some of my books. Um, um, that's um, what I write and publish and think about um, in all my free time. Um, and um, um, so just by way of conclusion, since I'm seeing all these questions building up, which is awesome. Um, why is this a great investment to recap? Um, you'll walk away with a grade that's reflective of how you did on an actual law school exam. Um, this is a selective program. So simply being admitted to it is gonna be a great way to enhance your CV. If you're anxious about getting into law school or wanna make sure you get into a top law school, um, a great way to get to know other students, peers in your age group who are also on the law school career track. Um, um, one thing I probably should have mentioned with greater depth earlier on um, are the mentorship opportunities. One of the things that um, the faculty involved really commit to is when July 22 rolls around, we don't say, bye-bye, have a good life. Um, we we um, um, expect that we'll be mentoring you guys, you know, whether writing recommendation letters or staying in touch with questions, um, you know, in the time to come. So this is not a, a one-off, um, but the whole point is that the relationships we expect you guys are going to cultivate over the summer will extend um, for a much longer term. Um, um, so the mentorship opportunities and you're gonna be part of the Cornell Law School community, both getting to know a series of uh, professors, current law school students, um, and um, this again, very international um, um, roster 
of um, um, people who will be involved in the program. So um, it's meant to gratify all kinds of different interests. Um, but um, I think, again, if um, you're, you're interested in pitching this to mom and dad, um, the sheer range of different kinds of investments that we're hoping we can offer um, is one of the real goals of what we're trying to do. Um, um, so that was the extent of what um, I really wanted to emphasize. Um, and Rebecca, you can let me know if I overlooked anything, right? Anything crucial? No, I think you did a great job covering everything. We have a lot of really good questions in yeah. the chat. So I think, you know, anything that we may have missed would definitely get brought up there. So. Yeah, so maybe I'll just walk through some of those. Do I have another photo? There we go, another photo of Paris. Um, 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 so I'll simply walk through the questions. Um, and before, I, as I do that, I noticed a couple of people gained, a, gained uh, joined a little late. Um, we will have another info session in, I think it's a week and a half on the 16th in the evening. So, um, and we will also be posting online um, one of the, the info sessions. Um, I think we, I don't want to cheer for my dog yet, but uh, we made it through. So anyway, questions. Um, one question that was sent to me, can people who graduated a year early apply to this? Um, yeah, this is meant to be, as I was saying, there are two halves to the program. So if you're currently in law school, you should be applying to the other half that's offered through the law school, not through um, um, this program. And I can direct you to that info if anyone wants it. Um, but if you have yet to start law school, if you're you know, not yet beginning, this is absolutely a program for you. So it's for anyone pre-law. Um, the last time we met in Paris, there was actually a PhD student in comparative literature from Cornell who was part of the program. We also had a master's student in business. Um, and these are people who were again saying, I think I might wanna to go to law school, but I'm not totally sure. And this was their way to again, really get a flavor for what it would be like. So, so yeah, if you're already in law school, a different program, but if you have yet to start, however old you are, um, <laughs> this is absolutely for you. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. Um, We've put a lot of thought into the organization, more examples of the span of international law topics referenced in the program and how you involve local experts. Um, um, well, the, it's, the, you'll be tra visiting some of these courts. Um, it's a shorter program. So there is a chance there'll be a guest speaker or two, um, um, but in terms of in local experts, most of our issues will deal with um, uh, matters of relevance, um, the types of things you would read about if you open the New York Times or a French newspaper. So for instance, there'll be um, a unit on debates about human rights and international human rights and immigration, right? It's hard to think of a hotter button topic in <laughs> French politics right now. Um, there will be units on um, constitutional issues and the attempt to Europe, there was a movement for a European constitution that fell apart a couple of decades ago. We'll have a unit on why it fell apart and why might Europe want a constitution. So we'll be learning about the EU and the organization of the EU. We'll also be learning about comparative law. Um, this is a, Cornell is a US law school but lots of people have careers aimed at placing American law into dialogue with international legal topics. So those will be the types of units that we cover. Um, um, we can certainly email syllabi from past classes if you wanna drop um, one of us a note. Um, I went, Nicholas, I went to Hope College, um, small liberal arts school. Um, so again, um, University you're in Holland, Michigan. Yeah, I didn't grow up there, but that's yeah, indeed. Are you from Michigan? Yeah, I'm from Southfield, Michigan. Oh, cool. Are you are you in Ithaca now? Or that looks like a Cornell backdrop. Yeah, yeah. I'm currently in Ithaca I'm on West Campus. Oh, cool. So you're also trapped in your dorm because of the snow, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, fantastic. Um, um, well, yes, I grew up in Michigan. Um, <laughs> um, the application process, Rebecca, can cover, wanna, yeah. Yeah, I can cover that one. So the application is now open. So I can drop the link to the um, webpage for the program um, again, and then you'll be able to go to that page and you'll see a little green apply button and that will drop you into the application. Um, the application has a couple sections to it. Um, we'll wanna know what you're currently studying, what you're interested in studying, if you are not a Cornell student, we'll need to see your transcript. Um, there's a couple other nuts and bolts of the application that's, you know, permission to check things. Do you have a passport? All these kinds of questions that we have to ask. There will also be a statement of purpose, kind of trying to understand what your interest in the program is. Um, and then the deadline is March 1st. But I strongly suggest that you start applying now and uh, apply as soon as possible because we will start reviewing applications in the order that they've been submitted. And we have had a lot of interest so far. So, yeah. yeah we just launched the application, I guess, this week, right? And we've already had yep. tons of interest. So, um, do not, do not like March 1 is probably. Um, a bit risky, shall we say, if you're really invested. Um, the cost is on, I don't remember the exact dollar sign, the cost is on um, the website with the application and everything. Um, this is a four credit course. If you're a Cornell student, it also um, counts for credit toward um, certain majors like the Law and Society program. Um, but it will show up again if you're, if you're not Cornell as a four credit course on your transcript. Um, and so it's priced per credit. So standard Cornell tuition per credit. Um, um, there is a program fee, which will cover some of the outings and that kind of stuff um, that the tuition obviously does not include meals and lodging. Um, um, what people have done past years is either um, um, we're working on and working out the numbers for dorm rooms. So that's kind of in motion because it will depend on enrollment numbers. Um, but people have also gotten Airbnbs and that's been super successful in past years. Um, and again, it's hard for me to stress how friendly Paris is to tourists. Um, um, once we have the people who are going, we can also put you in touch if you want to say have a roommate and get an Airbnb. Um, we can help you, you know, navigate location, all of that. So, so there would be, you know, perks to doing it either way, as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Um, um, I rent Airbnbs by myself a lot of times too, and it's 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 remarkably user friendly. Yeah, Rebecca, sorry. Sorry. I was just going to note that for the housing that will be available for students, it will be singles with an ensuite bathroom, and then there'll be shared common spaces like a kitchen and lounge, but it'll be somewhat similar to a dorm, but obviously a little bit nicer because it's in Paris, but that's what Everything you can expect. Nice for Paris. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like Paris. No, I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> So eligibility requirements. I mean, I think Rebecca talked through some of that with the application. Um, so, and again, this is gonna be, you know, a rather selective um, acceptance process. So we don't have a firm cutoff with GPA, especially as we're looking at people from different schools and the like. Um, um, but um, um, again, the goal is for you to be able to say on your, CV or, or, you know, that, hey, I was accepted to the selective program. So um, um, does the grade count towards your, if you're a Cornell student, yes, um, the grade will count towards your GPA, right? You're getting Cornell credit for it. Um, um, you know, the thing I should emphasize, right, these, these two real law school classes that you take, um, the professor is obviously going to know that they're grading a pre-law exam versus, you know, a current law student exam. So you don't have to worry about um, this being, the grading being harder, right? The grading will be on par with and commensurate with the kind of grading you would get in a normal Cornell undergraduate class. So don't worry about that. They will absolutely know, even though the grading will be blind, they won't know whose exam they're grading, just like it is in law school. Um, they will know that you're a pre-law student, if that makes any sense. Um, and obviously, 
the exams and all of that will be written, the assignments will be created for an audience, right, that's commensurate with where you guys all are now. So the fact that there are two halves to the program that you're going to be mixed in with some real law students should not be, you know, daunting or a deterrent. Um, it's meant to give you, again, a flavor and a real taste and feel for what law school is actually like, um, not to make the grading harder or anything like that. Um, we talked, do we speak enough about housing? Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Are there scholarships offered? No, unfortunately, there aren't scholarships offered. Rebecca, you were going to, yeah. I can talk a little bit more about that. And there is information on the cost tab, as well as the cost of the program on the experience link that I just dropped in. Um, but for, for Cornell students, there's financial aid in the form of loans is possible. So definitely talk to financial aid um, and find out. Um, unfortunately, that's not an option for non-Cornell students, but there are a, um, a lot of national grants and scholarships available to all undergraduate students. So if you do receive aid and get the Pell Scholarship, you would be eligible for the Gilman Scholarship. Um, that's a helpful travel grant to help you at least get yourself out here or get yourself to Paris. <laughs> not in Paris now, unfortunately, but yeah, as far as your flight, it can be really helpful with that. Um, the deadline for that is March 1st as well, so make sure you're um, taking a look at that if you're serious about applying. Um, and then on that link as well, there's a database from the University of Minnesota that just kind of goes through all different kinds of scholarships and grants for abroad, um, including summer and semester grants, so that's a really helpful site as well. Um, yeah, but again, if you're a Cornell student and just want to know, definitely reach out to financial aid. Yeah. And I mean, the economics flights are super cheap now. I'm actually going to buy my flight for the summer very, very soon. Um, and once you get there, it's easy to eat on the cheap in Paris. So there are all sorts of cafes. Food at cafes is not necessarily pricey. So, um, you know, eating and drinking when there is not astronomical um, in terms of how those things go. So, Auditing, um, yes, you can absolutely audit if you don't need the credits. If you're a Cornell student, that's totally an option. Um, um, you know, again, we're dealing with numbers and all of that. Would you agree, Rebecca? I mean, that would be my sense. Um, yeah, we would have to check with students uh, with um, SCE, the School of Continuing Education, but I would think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I would recommend going either between my sophomore and junior year or between my junior and senior year, you know, or frankly, if you're taking, you know, a bunch of gap years, if you're taking three, four years off before law school, that would also be a great time frame. But, you know, after freshman year is probably a little premature um, and also maybe a little premature to be in Europe, but, but either of those years would be super smart in terms yeah. of timing. Sorry, I thought you were talking about summer specifically. I think, any, if you're eligible for a summer program, usually they're a little bit more, um, you get a little bit more support, but as far as a semester study abroad, a lot of students go junior year, but you can go, at least at Cornell, sophomore spring up to senior fall. Um, how many people apply? How many are selected? Um, you know, this is a new program and then the pandemic happened. So we had two summers where we couldn't go at all. Um, so we are going to kind of see where the numbers are. So stay tuned. Um, but between the, you know, mix of law school students and you guys, I would expect that the program will be anywhere from 40 to 80 students combined. Um, um, again, that's an, an estimate. So we'll stay tuned. Um, how many hours of reading per day? You know, I would say two max, maybe less some days, um, maybe more some days. Um, as you get closer to exams, you might want to study. Um, <laughs> there's also a study day before exams. Um, so I would say that, you know, the amount of work will be light at the beginning and build a little bit, right? As you get closer toward the finals, um, um, but again, this is, it's not meant to ruin your time in Paris. 
You will have ample time for play and fun, and you'll be in class for anywhere from three hours a day to four hours a day. So again, the class, it's not like you're gonna be in class all day and then have to go do homework, right? You could easily do your reading in the morning and over lunch, and then have your afternoons and evenings, you know, mostly free. Um, is this factored into a core? It, yeah, it is included in the GPA. Um, I'm just scanning all the questions. Is an official transcript file upload acceptable? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We'll need a, an official transcript if you're a non Cornell student. If you are a Cornell student, we don't need a transcript because we can see that um, as advisors, we have access to that. But if you're a non Cornell student, we'll need to see an official transcript and there's an upload within the application where you can add that. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody found the application on the website, right? Someone I asked can, about that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll drop the link in one more time because the chat's getting pretty long. You know, I, inter we're gonna start reading applications this week um, as Rebecca was saying. So, you know, you could find out about acceptance two weeks from now, right? Um, uh, maybe even less, um, um, you know, certainly by the second week of March. Um, or, you know, yeah, I would say second week of March, just, you know, we'll, we'll make, we'll be making decisions that, you know, final decisions and have our class list, right? Is that, that's accurate to say, right, Rebecca? Yeah, I would say you, you guys can, you will hear sometime in like, early to mid-March about answers, about decisions, um, yeah. Yeah, and there will, yeah, there will of course be, but you know, as we're getting ready, there will of course be a couple sessions, both Zoom or in person if you're at Cornell, um, planning for the program and gearing up, right? So that, you know, a chance to meet other people who might be, who are going before you guys show up in Paris and all of that, so, um, so there'll be some kind of you know preparation session <laughs> before we um, before we get on our airplanes, shall we say? Um, so I see a couple questions about insurance and visas that I can address. Oh, so cool. Cornell, Cornell has um, medical insurance for all travelers who go abroad, um, and that applies to summer study as well. Um, as far as non-Cornell students, that's something I'm gonna to have to confirm on, but since you are enrolled in the Cornell course, I would feel that you would also be eligible for that insurance. Um, definitely something we can talk about um, if you wanna email me directly and I can look into it. Um, most insurances you can take abroad and since it's a shorter program, it usually just whatever your insurances you already have through your institution or your parents or your own private insurance will be enough for that time. And as far as the visa, U.S. students can be in France and other countries within the EU for up to 90 days without a visa. If you're an international student, you probably will have to apply for something called a Schengen visa, but that's something we can also discuss later. Um, wow. Other questions, um, some are getting sent just to me. Um, um, when uh, I was in France in December, everything is now Apple Pay or credit card, including if you're sitting at a cafe outside, um, having a glass of wine and you need to pay, they just come up to you with this mobile credit card machine and you go click, click. So I think I spent like, you know, only used about 40 euros worth of cash the whole time I was there in December. Um, and that's even true for like taxis and stuff now or Uber. Um, so you'll probably wanna, you know, get, you know, 100 euros out of the bank when you show up or something, but you can also get away with like credit cards these days. Mm -hmm. It's super easy, right? It's about like as easy as traveling to New York City. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm concerned. Um, I, I any major just, can apply there. Sorry, what were you going to say, Rebecca? Yeah. I'll just say, make sure you talk to your credit card company to find out if there's going to be any fees using yeah. it actually. Yeah. And you, find out. you also and have so to let them know so they don't lock your card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. We'll give you guys all kinds of tips like that, you know, checklist yep. before leaving, because, you know, sometimes your bank will like, if you, the same thing now, right? If you make an international car, charge on your credit card, the bank might block it. So, you know, you just get on the phone before you leave. Um, it's open to any majors. So absolutely, you know, you can be a bio major. Um, 
whatever kind of major, French major, no, <laughs> English major. Um, so no, no requirements or restrictions there. Um, yeah, and the teachers, I'm one of your teachers, um, both law school professors exactly, but these are undergraduate credits that you're getting. Exactly, these are not law school credits. Um, they're undergrad credits. Um, but again, it's a way for you to get to know Cornell Law School faculty and establish a relationship to become part of that community. Um, and as I was saying, um, I've spent a huge amount of time mentoring and advising students from past summers. Um, it's awesome writing recommendation letters. You know, I actually had um, a former student in my 1L contracts class here at Cornell Law School. She was part of the Paris program as an undergrad and then got admitted to um, Cornell Law and um, had me in um, law school class. So just a couple testimonials. Um, um, there, there should be any, everyone who's, attend, who's attended this or signed up is now officially on the email list, right, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. And we'll receive any email updates. Um, 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 no, unfortunately, there's no mitigating tuition costs if, if we're even allowed to allow, allow audits. Um, um, I believe, I actually don't know what, what France requires right now with vaccines, but um, Cornell's policy, I think regarding vaccination status will apply, won't it, Rebecca, that you need boosters unless there's an exemption for religious or other purposes. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely, that's correct. So you'll need to be fully vaccinated, which includes boosters. France is actually the same as well. They're one of the first countries to require a booster as being fully vaccinated is what they say. So yeah, all Cornell's policies around traveling will apply to students, uh, even if they're non-Cornell. Yeah, is there um, um, a down payment that we require, Rebecca? Yeah, so there'll be a deposit. Um, the timing of that is still a little bit unknown, but it will be shortly after you hear a decision will require a deposit. So probably sometime in late March or by April 1 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then go over the housing policy again. You're going to have a choice between um, dorm or finding an Airbnb, right? It's um, that's to me, as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the cool things about the program is you get to select what kind of housing you're actually interested in. And if it sounds like more fun to have an apartment, um, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. um, so. I did see a question in the chat of someone who is working on the application now and didn't see their major as a, an, an option. The majors are Cornell majors. So that's just the access we have for the application. So if you don't see your major, I would say try to select whatever's the closest to the field. And then we can, you can either email me and let me know, and I'll make a note on your application, or you can add it into your statement so that we know what you're studying. Yeah, so did, did we do an okay job? I think we answered all the questions that I'm seeing, um, but you can certainly email um, 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 Rebecca, did we put the email? I think I have it here, don't I? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll drop um, my email. And it's abroad at cornell.edu, right? Um, yeah. So if you have logistical questions like, how do I access the application? Da, 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 da. Um, the abroad at cornell.edu or Rebecca's email. If you have a substantive question about, um, so what will we, you know, what will we be learning about? Um, da, 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 um, that kind of stuff. Um, that would be directed to me. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just start by emailing abroad, or I'll drop in my personal email too. If it's something that I can't answer, I'll pull in uh, Liz, and she'll be able to help too. Um, but so there was one question that was emailed to me previous to the start of the session. And someone was wondering about if the program was canceled because of COVID or lack of attendance, can they attend the New York program? So the programs actually aren't connected in that way. So no, that wouldn't be an option, but you could apply for the New York one as well if you wanted to, or, or just that one if you're worried about COVID. However, I don't anticipate this program being canceled due to 
low enrollment numbers or, or for COVID because um, as Liz went over, France is a very safe place to be right now as far as COVID and Cornell's policies around study abroad in general is that we wouldn't um, stop uh, international study from happening at this point due to the pandemic. But of course, things can always change, something that we just have to be really transparent about. But right now, I do not anticipate that being an issue at all. Yeah. Yeah, and I was there during the kind of, right, when Omicron was exploding um, and it was, you know, perfectly safe and easy and calm and all of that. So, um, so yeah, we do not anticipate this being canceled and I'm going to be in France in July. So, no, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would not, I would not worry about that. I think we're at the stage where we can um, make plans with confidence. Um, mm -hmm. Any other questions like that? Um, just maybe, oh, um, not specifically related, but it's just about scholarships for the program, specifically for Cornell students and, well, anybody really. Like, I know that Cornell usually doesn't accept scholarships for tuition, um, but I'm just wondering, do they treat this program differently? Mm, what do you, what do you mean? Like I guess outside, I don't understand your question, I'm sorry. Like outside scholarships, um, at least oh. for school tuition, you can't really use outside scholarships for tuition or it doesn't reduce costs, it just... So yeah, that would not apply for this program because it's not, it's not going against any aid that you're getting from Cornell as far as like institutional aid. So if you're getting an outside um, grant or scholarship like the Gilman, you can certainly use it towards this program. Okay, and does um, does Cornell does the tuition scholarship that we get for the school year also contribute to this? No, you no, because that scholarship can only be used towards semester study. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Any others? No. Well, it's so nice to see smiling faces, some smiling faces over Zoom. Um, and um, I'm super excited about this summer. So um, I hope to see some of you um, in Paris. Um, and again, please let us know if you have any questions. Um, as we were saying, there'll be another session um, on the 16th. Uh, I think it's at 5.30 PM. So if you wanna hear a little bit more about the program, um, have me go over this and join live then, you're certainly welcome to attend that session too. Um, um, and, um, um, but yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. Um, so please keep us posted if you have anything else you wanna chat about or any other questions, that kind of thing. Um, is there anything else we should add that you can think of, Rebecca? Um, no, I think that was great. I just added the link for the next session if anyone is interested in joining again. And then I'll just add the link to the program page where the application is as well. And, and again, you guys are now, because you enrolled and attended this, you're on our information list. So any information tied to the program um, um, this next month, as we're um, fielding applications and the like, you will get an email. Mm -hmm. So any update, any necessary, oh, here comes Cedric, he's waking up, um, my dog. <laughs> he's not coming to Paris. I wish I could bring him, but unfortunately, yeah, it's too tricky. He's just too big to fit under the airplane seat. So I fantasize about bringing him to Paris some summer, but <laughs> <laughs> too tricky. So, so anyway, um, again, it was great to see all of you. Um, I'm gonna hang out for a little bit in case anyone wants to linger and ask any other questions. Um, and otherwise, um, keep us posted if anything comes up. And um, I hope you are staying warm. The snow is still coming down. Oh, sorry. I'm never gonna be able to leave my house. Um, <laughs> those of you in Florida or somewhere,